Hi, Frank. Where are you going? To the local chapter meeting of the SPEBSQSA Incorporated. The SQEBSQSA? Uh, that sounds like some subversive secret society. No, it's neither subversive or secret. It's the most fun society I know. Come with me and I'll show you. The old song, the old song. Behind these doors is the sweetest music this side of heaven. sound good, Frank. If you think that sounds good, listen to this. gotta be professional singers, Frank. It sounds like singing is their whole life. Would you believe you were listening to the Thoroughbreds of Louisville? A champion chorus. But each singer is an amateur like you and me. They represent every profession you can think of. Butchers, bakers, bookkeepers, airline pilots, engineers, ministers, board chairmen, Supreme Court judges, truck drivers, salesmen, you name it. Bet you they practice a lot. Yes, they are well trained. But you see, their objective was to be the best in the society. They tried hard and won the championship. You mean they competed with other groups? Yes. Each year an international competition is held to pick the best in North America. Listen to this. Wah, 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 the knowledge running wild up here. The teenage kids pick up the beat. So put on your dancing shoes. Better hurry. There's no time to lose. Now the music is playing. The ground is swaying. Doing a barbershop. They call it barbershop. Cause it's a barbershop. Strutting around. Let everybody join in. Doing a barbershop. Frank, who was that? That was the Boston Common Quartet. Aren't they great? A barbershop quartet. Four guys singing the same parts they sang with the chorus, but decided to do it alone. Now they must be professionals. Not at all. They all have jobs just like you and me, but they spend a lot of weekends enjoying their hobby. Say, you're a bathtub singer, aren't you, Fred? Well, yes. Uh, how's this? I want a girl just like the girl that married dear old dad. How would you like to make sounds like that with 40 other guys singing four-part harmony? My bathtub's not big enough, Frank. But tell me, why do you belong to the society? Ah, oh, because I enjoy singing, especially in harmony. Because it's just plain fun. A terrific release from daily trials and tribulations. And because it gives me a chance to serve others through song. It all boils down to one phrase. It's great to be a barber shopper. It all sounds very noble, Frank, but you said it was the SPEB, uh, whatever it is, society. The SPEBSQSA, Fred. The Society for the Preservation and Encouragement of Barbershop Quartet Singing in America, Incorporated. Barbershop Quartet? But you're not a barber, Frank. <laughs> no, and very few of our members are. As I said before, barbershop singers come from all walks of life. They also come from every corner of North America and some parts of Great Britain and Europe. But why do you call it barbershop singing? Did you ever hear the well-known phrase, the gas-lit tonsorial parlor? Can't say that I have. Sounds like a dentist's office. No, Fred. It refers to the barbershop. You see, in the early part of this century, the barbershop was the logical place for the average group of guys to meet. Many barbershops had a pool room in the back. You knew that. I remember my grandfather telling me that. Then he must have told you there was always a gang who loved to sing. Remember there were 
were no radios or phonograph players back then. All they had was sheet music. But most of the songs got passed on by one person singing them to others. There were songs from the showboat or minstrel show or cowboy ballads or waterfront songs. And many of them were kept alive in the barber shop. You're a very knowledgeable fellow, Frank. Thank you. But I haven't told you the whole story yet. You see, back in 1938, a couple of fellows named Rupert Hall and O.C. Cash decided to do something to preserve this kind of music. So they called some meetings in Tulsa, Oklahoma, and rallied enough interest to form the society. Did the society grow much? Indeed it did grow, Fred. Good fun is contagious, you know, and so's harmony. Have a look at this map. Notice there are 16 districts covering the United States and Canada. Each district is broken into areas, and each area has a number of chapters. There are over 800 chapters and almost 40,000 members. It takes 20 members to license a chapter and 30 members for it to charter. There are more than 1,500 registered quartets and as many unregistered quartets as there are pitch pipes. Why do the quartets register? Well, because registering allows a quartet to compete in recognized competitions. It also establishes their name on the records, so other quartets can't use it. Oh, I see. Promise you won't laugh at my next question. I promise. What's a pitch pipe? <laughs> well, that brings up a whole new subject, which is what makes barbershop singing different from other forms of music. But what's a pitch pipe, Frank? I'm getting to that. A pitch pipe is what its name implies. It's a pipe you blow a note on to establish the pitch or key in which you'll sing. The reason it's necessary is that barbershop singing is unaccompanied. Most of those early barbershops didn't have pianos, Fred. There are four harmonies in a barbershop song, thus the reason for a quartet. They are the lead, which sounds like this. My wild Irish rose, the sweetest flower that grows. Hmm. Is that the melody, Frank? That's right. Now let's hear the bass. My wild Irish rose, the sweetest flower that grows. Now let's put them together. My wild Irish rose, the sweetest flower that grows. Next, listen to the tenor. My wild Irish rose, the sweetest flower that grows. The tenor almost always sings a harmony above the melody. This helps to distinguish the barbershop sound. Listen. My wild Irish rose, the sweetest flower that grows. I like that, Frank. Yes, but there's one part missing, Fred, the baritone. Listen to this. My wild Irish rose, the sweetest flower that grows. That sounds weird, Frank, but I think I like it. The baritone has to be content to sing the notes that are left. That must be difficult. Oh, baritones are usually very clever fellows. Now let's put it all together. My wild Irish rose, the sweetest flower that grows. Well, swallow my pitch pipe, so that's how it's done. Say, Frank, do you think it would be all right if I came to your meeting with you? It would be a pleasure to have you, Fred. But before we go in, there's still a few facts you should know. You see, much of the enjoyment of being a member comes from serving others in song. Barbershop chapters, choruses, and quartets across North America sing for old folks' homes, orphanages, hospitals, crippled children, the blind, retarded children, veterans' hospitals, wherever there's a need to cheer someone up. Many of our quartets have done tours to entertain the troops. 
Chapters get involved in local fundraising campaigns and produce one or two major shows a year and will sing for their community at the drop of a hat. Yeah, I'll bet they're all hands like you, Frank. Well, a lot of us are, Fred. A lot of us are. But we get serious when it comes to our major service project. What is your major service project? We sing that they shall speak. Barbershop groups across this land support the Institute of Logopedics in Wichita, Kansas. Oh, would you run that by me again? Logopedics. That means speech therapy and training for children who, for one reason or another, have difficulty speaking or can't speak. Each year we provide some of the money to help these kids under the banner, We Sing That They Shall Speak. Gee, that's terrific. But how do you coordinate a program like that? The same way we coordinate most other aspects of our society, through our headquarters at Kenosha, Wisconsin, Harmony Hall. That's appropriate, Harmony Hall. It looks like a castle. It's a lovely stone house on the shores of Lake Michigan, equipped with all the things it takes to run a society. An international executive director and a staff of approximately 35. Some staff travel the entire continent encouraging and preserving barbershop music. A complete printing and mailing facility, conference and research rooms, one of the outstanding old song libraries in the world. Gee, sounds like you're proud of that, Frank. Yes, but I think that the ongoing training system that's made possible because of the people and assets of Harmony Hall is our proudest possession. Through this training, members can become useful executives, quartets and choruses can achieve greatness, would-be musicians can become musical arrangers or chorus directors or even judges of competitions. Uh, tell me, Frank, how does a guy like myself know what's going on at Harmony Hall or anywhere else in the world of barbershopping? Two main ways. First, through communication with your chapter, area, and district offices. Second, through the society publications and information sheets of all kinds. Our bi-monthly magazine, The Harmonizer, keeps you up to date on conventions, top choruses and quartets, special activities of other chapters, and also provides free song arrangements with each issue. Okay, Frank, I'd like to become a member. How can I do it? But you haven't been to a meeting yet, Fred. So what? I'll sign right now. Where do I sign? Listen, I'll introduce you to our membership man tonight. He'll explain our code of ethics and fees structure to you. But I suggest you come to at least three meetings before you join. Okay. By the way, how much does it cost, Frank? Well, that varies from chapter to chapter. A percentage of the fee goes to international headquarters, some to the district, and your own chapter. But I assure you it's not expensive, and it's one of the best investments in your future happiness you could possibly make. Good. Let's go in. Okay, Fred. Well, Fred, now that you've been with us for a few weeks, how are things going? Haven't you heard, Frank? I'm singing in a novice quartet in the upcoming regional competition. Is that right? Funny nobody ever asked me. I asked them, Frank. I asked them. Well, what'd they say when you told them you could only sing in a bathtub? Well, they said quartets could use props, so ours would be a bathtub. Did you pick a name? Yes. Well, what is it? Promise you won't laugh? I promise. I promise. The rubber duck. <laughs> 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 